Ecamm Live version 4, betas 5, 6, and 7 were all released today. And it was really beta 5 that was the main one, as you can see from the, the release notes. Uh, but if you did get that and you haven't uh, been in and checked for updates, make sure you do that because 6 and 7 included some essential fixes for beta 5. So you do want to make sure that you're obviously always running the latest version. Really, though, there was uh, one standout new feature or an improvement on existing feature, though, in this release. And that is that we can now have up to 10 guests in interview mode, whereas before the limit was four. So this is the obviously the ability to uh, bring in a guest who can call in from any browser uh, and then you can incorporate them into your uh, into your production. Uh, so there's nothing really new to demo here because it's just a case of you've just got more guests that you can add in. And if you've been using interview mode, you'll know how all of that works. Uh, one little thing that you may be uh, potentially wondering is, well, with 10 guests, could I actually now be thinking about cancelling my Zoom subscription or Teams subscription or something like that uh, and start to use this as a meeting platform? I know that a few people have mentioned about this uh, and talked about how they uh, consider using it for client work and things like that for meetings. One thing to bear in mind, though, is that Ecamm Live is a live streaming and uh, recording software and it is intended to bring in these guests and give you the highest quality uh, audio and video that uh, they're capable of um, and then you can incorporate those into your uh, your output be it a live stream or a recording however it isn't intended as a meeting platform and what you may find is uh, or what you will find is that your guests are not necessarily getting the same quality as you're getting and uh, a lot of people don't realize that and so uh, they may hear their guests saying you know that they're noticing a little bit of lag on their side or the image quality isn't quite as good um, well that's because Ecamm is just prioritizing everything that's coming in as that is the most essential for your broadcast that is going out as opposed to just making sure your uh, guests on the other side who are essentially just monitoring it uh, are getting the uh, top quality there. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend using this as a replacement for any meeting software anytime soon, um, but uh, who knows where things will go in the future. But I just thought I'd mention that because it's something that comes up quite often about people using it for uh, client meetings and it may not give the right impression if they're not getting the uh, the quality that you think you are delivering to them. <laughs> so with that said, let's move on to uh, the next new feature features that have been added in and it's a few little tweaks and improvements really uh, one of which is uh, related to NDI so if you use NDI for broadcasting um, or receiving um, uh, video over your network either sending or receiving uh, well they've updated the NDI to NDI 5.5 which is the latest version of the uh, the framework the protocol <laughs> whatever you want to call it um, and uh, so that has uh, just been updated to uh, be in line with as I say the latest release of NDI. Uh, the other thing, though, is in the uh, create new broadcast window, uh, and this is related to, in fact, this is the sort of first thing on the list of updates, uh, adds Facebook page cross-posting to the create new broadcast window. Uh, I didn't really know what this was, to be honest, when I first saw it and I had to, uh, had to do some inquiries to find out exactly where it was because I couldn't actually see any noticeable change in the create new broadcast window. Uh, it will only show up if you are uh, streaming to a Facebook page where you have set up Facebook page cross posting. And that is something that you do in Facebook itself. That's something where in Facebook, you can, uh, for your Facebook page, you can establish relationships or connections with other Facebook pages, and it will do the cross posting for you. So if you are on a page that has that ability, um, then this uh, new box that you can see uh, highlighted in red here is going to just actually appear in the create new broadcast window. Otherwise, it just won't be there. So if you saw it uh, as I did in the list of updates and went looking for it, uh, that might be why you didn't uh, find it. I've got to say, I wasn't even really aware that this function existed. And why it is quite interesting is because what it means is you are still streaming to Facebook with just one of your uh, one of your streams, um, but then they are doing the cross-posting for you. So it's kind of like, I suppose, a little bit of multi-streaming like actually on the Facebook side. So it just helps to keep your, uh, your bandwidth down. Um, so this is where this appears. This previously was in the, uh, the Ecamm Live preferences. We used to have the tab for the uh, LinkedIn, as I used to, like it was a, a week ago before I updated to this, Peter. Um, but it, we had this special tab for the uh, Facebook settings, and that is where you would previously have, um, have dealt with this. So now they've just uh, reinstated it, but put it into here. Um, still, whilst we are on this page, or on this uh, little window. Uh, the other thing they've done is they've added a scroll bar, although I cunningly didn't put any description in, <laughs> but they added in a scroll bar to the uh, description tab here. So uh, previously there wasn't one, but now you'll be able to uh, just scroll down uh, through that. 
Incidentally, I mentioned uh, speed here. Um, so they have actually added, where is it just hit down here, where it says the uh, required speed, uh, they haven't added. But one of the uh, fixes in this is that uh, there was an issue where this required speed was changing. And it was something to do with when you would uh, come out of recording mode and go into streaming mode. Sometimes there was some little bug where uh, that would uh, seemingly increase. Uh, and I had noticed that it wasn't consistent all the time as reading as the same number. But now they've uh, fixed this so that basically it always reads this uh, 5.9 megabits per second, which is what they're saying in this case is for, I think, uh, a 1920 by 1080 HD uh, stream. Obviously, that will increase if you are doing different uh, resolutions and things like that. But basically, if you had noticed that these uh, these requirements were sort of changing sometimes for no apparent reason, uh, that's what it was. It was a little bug and they have uh, they fixed it. <laughs> um, so what else have they added? It is in related to the um, uh, adds additional menu items, I'm reading it now, <laughs> uh, to view uh, the current or selected broadcasts watch page or announcement. So I don't know if uh, everybody is entirely aware of this, but you can actually, from within Ecamm, when you are streaming, if I come into live demo mode, um, you'll find in the edit menu, uh, copy YouTube URL. So that'll copy the URL of the actual stream itself. Also in this beta menu, uh, you can see the uh, watch page from here as well. So those are just little links that it gives you out to those pages. And I think that this is basically, they've just added some additional links in uh, when you are streaming uh, to the, as I say, the watch page or the announcement page. Um, so apart from this, though, the uh, obviously the main one is those additional um, uh, 10 <laughs> guests that we can have in interview mode. There are some fixes that uh, I know have come up and a lot of people have mentioned. So I'll just quickly mention those. Um, one was one that I experienced myself was that YouTube and Facebook comments, sometimes they were duplicating in the uh, chat window. So that has been uh, fixed now. Um, then also a uh, thumbnail uploaded to uh, YouTube using their built-in um, uh, scheduler. It uh, could sometimes appear blurry. That has been fixed. Uh, a broadcast, uh, starting a broadcast uh, to a scheduled restream event could uh, fail. So that has been fixed. Uh, and then two final ones are the... Um, uh, the Ecamm Live display didn't uh, viewer count for Restream or Twitch uh, didn't display uh, correctly at times as well. And then the final one was that bandwidth issue that I men mentioned before. So those are the uh, the main updates. But really, as I say, lots of people are going to be happy about that uh, that 10 guest for interview mode. Uh, the rate that they're pushing out these updates, I can't wait to see what is still to come. We always expected that 4.0 would be a big update. Obviously, it's a major release. Um, but yeah, it's just amazing to see how quickly all these things are coming out. And with two fixes in a day, they're certainly proactive about correcting it. As always, I'll leave a link in the description to the place where you can grab the beta if you're not already on it. Uh, and what I'll also do is leave a link to the video all about the major uh, releases that came out in that first beta as well.